You all know that I love parfums. At least if you've been watching the channel here for any number of videos and you've seen the lists and you've heard me go on and on about parfums, you're already aware of this, I'm sure. And so you may be wondering, well, what are some of my favorite parfum fragrances or really more specifically here, just what are some parfums that I'm obsessed with? Because uh, even though it's summertime and I'm usually wearing my summertime freshies, there's still some, some sweeter parfum fragrances in here, some wintertime parfums that I think about often. Like I'm down here a lot, obviously, planning and shooting videos, and so I've got access to all of my stuff here. And so a lot of times when I'm just trying to brainstorm stuff, I'll just kind of gravitate over to some fragrances that I really like that are out of season, and I'll smell them and I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, uh, this stuff here, it's still just as good as when I first smelled it. So I'm just gonna go over some of my favorite parfums and or some parfums that I'm also just currently hooked on. And I will link all these fragrances down below as well. So if you wanna pick some of these up, you can do so at any time. If I'm referencing pricing here in this video, it's gonna be based off of discount prices. So use those links, save yourself a ton of money and also get subscribed to the channel because if you notice on my community tab, I'm posting deals all the time, right? Sometimes it's a bit slow. Sometimes uh, websites just don't really have anything running. Other times it's like all at once, a bunch of deals pop up, a bunch of rare things may come into stock. So you wanna make sure you're subscribed and you're just checking the community tab a couple times a day, make sure you're not missing out on anything good. Uh, now with that, let's just get into it. And we're gonna start off with Armani Code Absolute, which is a parfum. Uh, might be easy to forget about that. I know for me, sometimes I even forget that this is a parfum, just because it's one of the fragrances where it isn't in the name. Um, you got Armani Code Profumo, which of course is a parfum. Aqua de Joe Profumo Parfum, but this one is absolute, right? So it's easy to forget. Uh, sometimes you may think it's an eau de parfum, but no, this is a true parfum concentration with vanilla, orange, suede, and uh, all of that good stuff. A little bit of um, this Tonka bean kind of dusty powdery sweetness as well. It's a really, really impressive release. I was hooked on this one ever since I first smelled it. The first time I smelled it, it kind of blew me away for sure. And now each time I smell it, I'm still like, wow, like this here is really good stuff. Now I've got another one that I've been bringing up here lately. It's a new release of, as of this year. And I don't know, it's just one that's completely changed on me for the better. And that is Gucci Guilty Parfum. So I have the cap off because I was gonna spray it. Um, Gucci Guilty Parfum, that's what it looks like, full presentation style. So a true parfum. Now this one has lemon, juniper, orange blossom. Now what is so interesting to me about this one is there's some sort of different smell about it. Like the fact that it's parfum concentrated, but then also using some of these brighter notes like I just listed off. There's also this weird texture in here that I don't really get from any of the others or from any other fragrance. It's just one of those deals where when I smell it, it just has this richness and this kind of addicting and alluring quality about it that literally has me hooked. Like I have been obsessed with this just out of nowhere. I did a first impressions. I wasn't too awfully excited about it at that time. But as I've been down here testing it more to do a review, it, it's like after I sprayed it again and wore it again and a couple times after I'd taken a break from it, it like it had changed on for the better. I'm like, whoa wait a minute, this is really, really impressive. And I don't know, just something kind of random. So I encourage you, if you've tried Gucci Guilty Parfum, maybe you sampled it or tried it initially and didn't care for it, revisit it. You know, that's the power of, of fragrances and progressing in this hobby is you may end up coming back to it and realize you really like it. Uh, this one here, it, even though it is a parfum, it, it is still more kind of warmer weather oriented for me. Now it is heavier and richer than your typical summer scent. But for me, I've still been wearing it out in the summertime and I haven't regretted it once. This here is surprisingly a really, really solid scent. Definitely look into this one. Retails 150, that is just pretty absurd. So hit the link down below, get it for about 113. Still not cheap, but uh, better than retail. Next up, Azaro, the most wanted parfum. I really, really like it. It is right there, tied with Wanted by Night for me. No questions asked. Uh, I'll take this over any other version other than Wanted by Night. It's really, they're kind of equal to me right now, but we'll see how I feel as I really give this one some, some heavy wearing 
as we're going to be moving into fall here in a few months, which is really depressing actually to say that. So I'm not going to say that again, but just know in a little while I'll be wearing this more. Bourbon, vanilla, ginger, and woody notes are uh, some of the main notes here. I think that might be all they give us. I think it's one of those three note breakdown deals, but you know, bourbon vanilla, it's kind of giving off a little bit of a boozy sweetness, good dose of woods, more sandalwood type of thing, not too much of a spicy cedar wood. Good amount of creaminess, a sweetness, kind of gourmand. It's very addicting. I love it. Again, it, oh man, like the way the ginger comes across, it gives it this kind of fizziness. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the opening of something like Dunhill's Icon. Now I'm not comparing them because we're talking different scents here, but you know that fizzy feeling that you get in the opening of Icon kind of translates over into this one. It's really a, a nice composition all the way through. I personally prefer it over uh, the most wanted. Uh, ju I just think it, it works better for me, although some people still prefer that one. But this is a parfum concentration and I think it's also really impressive. Let's move over to this one, Polo Blue Parfum. I understand there's a lot of newer releases in here, but you know this is also kind of going off of stuff that I'm just hooked on right now, as I mentioned in the beginning, and I've really been just over the moon impressed with these new releases this year. This one has, looks like vetiver, orange, clary sage, and oak. Haven't memorized this one quite yet. But I do know that I get good amount of that oak in the dry down along with the patchouli vetiver combo. This one gets richer and more mature in the dry down. I've done a review on this one already. Check that out for more info. But the point is the dry down is where this one comes to life in the best way possible. Great, great parfum scent. Wears like a true parfum, smells great, gets you good compliments. This is a solid release. Up next, we have Hugo Boss, the scent. This is gonna be the Le Parfum version here. This one has the Maninka fruit, which is signature. It's got ginger, iris, and leather. And also, I've been out of focus this whole time. Why didn't you tell me? You probably did already, about 12 of you in the comments. Yeah, that's all right, just one of those deals. Um, this is uh, also really quite nice. You know, the scent line is kind of unique given the fact that it utilizes that Maninka fruit pretty heavily. And so it, it just kind of is its signature thing. It makes it stand out. There's a bottle for you. Pretty sharp looking. And at one point they did have um, a parfum. And I think it was in a black bottle. Um, and I think, again, it was a parfum and they discontinued it. And didn't that one have iris? I don't know. I never was able to get a bottle, but I remember looking it up and wishing I was able to get one. And now they came out with this here, this Le Parfum, which is uh, concentrated as a parfum according to the bottom of the bottle. So that's pretty cool. It wears like one. It behaves like one. I like the iris in here. It's not too strong or too overbearing, but it's one that I find myself grabbing towards more than some of the other the scent fragrances. Nice one here. Let's go and toss in a niche fragrance up next. I haven't really talked about this brand all that often. From Nasamato, it is Pardon or Pardon. So we've got dark chocolate, tonka bean, and oud is some of the main notes here. Um, it's a 30 mil, straight to parfum concentration. And yeah, this here will last you a lifetime. Talk about a strong scent. Really all the Nasamatos are. Black Afghano, Baranda, all of those are just, just heavy hitting, strong, rich scents. And I really like this one just for the fact that it has that chocolatey vibe going on with the woods. Uh, the oud is not too overbearing at all. It's actually a pretty wearable scent, all things considered here. It's nothing to be too intimidated about, although sampling would probably be the best way to go if you're not fully comfortable with compositions like this. Um, but the point is, it's just a really pleasant scent that I initially thought I wasn't going to care for all that much and I didn't think I would be able to wear it that much. But after getting it in and smelling it, and of course I blind bought it, uh, I was like, you know what? This is way more wearable than I thought it would be. I think that's pretty neat. Next up, Armani Stronger With You, absolutely. So this is their Absolu, which is a parfum, kind of like uh, Armani Code Absolu. Uh, I was super pumped up for this one. When they launched it and I saw the note breakdown and I was waiting for my bottle and I saw that rum in here, I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. So it's got rum, has that chestnut note reintroduced. You know, they took it away and intensely they brought it back here. Uh, vanilla to a heavy extent. A lot of sweetness going on, but that's no surprise from the Stronger With You lineup. But I think that absolutely is going to be the most mature and the most 
refined and well-rounded out of all of them. It's my favorite flanker out of all of them. Uh, still, even over the exclusive editions for the most part, I mean, the new Oud one was really good, but just wearability and performance and mass appeal and all that stuff, this is the one to get. If you like that boozy touch in here, then that's something you're gonna be interested in as well. So I just think this one, really, really nice. The only issue is it can be a little tough to get here sometimes in the US, but to stay on the lookout, it's definitely worth picking up. Next up, we have Sauvage Elixir by Dior. So this one has a kind of a different note breakdown here. Very not Sauvage-like, and you'll see that in a second here. Um, this one has, looks like, cinnamon, lavender, nutmeg, and licorice, among many others as well. Um, there's, a, I think, I don't know, another note that I'm missing that I had on the top of my head. I think there's patchouli in here, um, but it, it's different. It's very warm, spicy, as you can see there by the note breakdown. Uh, all of those notes there that I listed off are the ones that I pick up on the most. So you're getting this warm spice, but also this kind of more traditional uh, fragrant smell. Not aromatic fougere, but just more traditional smelling. You know, it's not your modern blue fragrance type of thing. This smells like something that's going to appeal to the guy who just wants something more mature and something that is more professional because most people would say that Sauvage is a very professional smelling and I can't disagree with you there. Uh, the Parfum is much more professional, but if you want full on to the max, luxurious and class, then go for Elixir. It's a Parfum, the performance is insane. Uh, it does not take much to get noticed with this. Let's check this one out, Cool Water Parfum. So um, yeah, Cool Water's kind of gone crazy with the flankers, as is usual with brands like this what, that put out a lot of cheapies. They're gonna put out a lot of flankers. And of course, Cool Water is a, a fragrance, the EDT, that has done so well that why not write off of that success? I can't really complain because they produce something good here with this one. Vetiver, lemon, pink pepper, some of the main notes here. Um, so it's soapy and clean, citrusy, it's very wearable, it's a great work scent, school scent, just something to wear every day. Um, the pricing is a little bit strange, like it's not as cheap as the EDT, uh, it's also out of stock often, so you're going to pay a little bit more than normal, but with that higher cost does come a higher quality product to me. Uh, the Eau de Toilette of Cool Water has always smelled on the cheaper side and it's only 20 bucks, I'm not saying that. Like, you know, I expect it to be Zerzhov quality or something, um, but it never really has impressed me on that front. Whereas some other fragrances in that price point to me do ha kind of have better quality. But this is one that has stood out just in all areas to me. Performs better, stronger, richer, more interesting. And it's just a nice parfum to have around if you just want something easy to wear. Great dumb reach type of scent. Now this last one is also a really impressive release for me. This is gonna be Eros Parfum by Versace. So it's got your typical Eros note breakdown, the apple, vanilla, tonka bean. Love it, love Eros Parfum, but I also really love Eros. So this is one of those deals where if you're just not a fan of Versace Eros, then the Parfum is not gonna fix that for you. The Flame isn't gonna fix that for you. The EDP, any other flanker they put out is not going to change the fact that you don't like Eros. And that's okay, you don't have to like Eros. You know, you don't have to like anything. You can like whatever you want. But for me, I like Eros. And so, when they put out flankers, they all smell good to me, but the Parfum has been the most impressive because it really is a Parfum flanker where it's smoother, it's more mature. Yeah, it's weird to hear Eros and mature in the same sentence, and this is nowhere near still being a, a professional fragrance, but it's further in that direction than the EDT, so it's cool that they've advanced towards that a little bit. It's just the one to get. It's the most refined. Um, it's not quite as loud in terms of its projection. I mean, it'll still push out, but it does better at leaving a trail. I just find this one to really check off all the boxes for me, for where I'm at now in my collecting hobby. If you're just starting out, Eros EDT and EDP is probably more where you would want to be at and even flame. But I think as time goes on and your taste changes, but also your wearing experience changes and what you prefer, that's when Parfums really come into play and it's cool that we have one. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. That is my 10 favorite Parfum fragrances that I just can't get enough of right now. These are all great in their own way and uh, just gotta have these. 
That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.